Go ahead. Oh, okay, great. Um, this is a flip video for chem students, and this is um, called Naming Ionic Compounds. The text that's covered here is going to be page 222, 223, and we're even going to get um, as far as some of the uh, polyatomics. Um, I do want to point out that having page 226 handy um, is going to be helpful when you're naming compounds in the sense that these are all of your polyatomics. Ideally, these should be memorized, but until that happens, it's nice to have this chart handy. The other thing I want to point out is there's tons of practice here in this book. The thing about naming is, is that it just takes practice. I'm going to show you how to do it, but in order to get good at it, you just have to keep doing it over and over. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, basically, what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to give you uh, a, a, a few elements. I'm going to talk you how to uh, talk you through how to name them. All right. So let's say that you wanted to put together magnesium and nitrogen. All right. The first thing you're going to need to do is look at your periodic table and find out the charges um, of of those as they appear on the periodic table. So if you flip to the back you'll realize that magnesium here is in group two. That's going to be the cation, and that means that it's positive. It's plus two. If you remember talking with your teacher about the magic number of eight, right, how these guys on this side and this side, this is plus one, plus two, plus three. These purple guys here are inert, and then these are minus one, minus two, minus three. The rest of the stuff in the middle we're going to get to as best we can as well. But there are, needless to say, a lot of exceptions. So, as I said, we found magnesium, it's plus two, and if we count back, nitrogen is minus three. So to start out naming, ooh, sorry, first what you have to do is you have to write the charges down. So magnesium is plus two and nitrogen is minus three. Now the name of the game here is balancing charges. So we want to make sure we write this such that the charges are balanced. Well, it looks like the um, least common multiple of 2 and 3 is going to be 6. So what we're going to do is we're going to have 3 magnesium cations, and then we're going to go ahead and have 2 nitrogen anions, and anions are negative. The way that I remember this sometimes is anion has that N in it, uh, and you can remember that that's negative. I always just remember cats are positive. But anyway, so you realize the plus 2 times 3 gives you a plus 6. The minus 3 times 2 gives you a negative 6. So we can write this as Mg3N2, all right? And that would be called magnesium nitride. This is the full element, magnesium, and then just like you did with the covalence, you take the nitrogen, and instead of it being magnesium nitrogen, it's magnesium nitride. You add the IDE. All right, let's do another one. Let's take cadmium and iodine. Once again, we need to look to our periodic table. I'll give you a hint. The first one is usually the cation, and it's going to be uh, over here. And I can't find it. Um, <laughs> and then iodine's right here. Um, yeah, that's really funny. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's a transition metal. Thank you, cameraman. It's a transition metal, and actually you're going to have to be given the um, information that it's cadmium 2. So it's cadmium 2, it's a plus 2. Sorry, gang. And then iodine we found over here to the left is minus 1. Obviously, the least common multiple here is going to be 2. So we're going to have just one cadmium and we're going to need two iodines. Now, when you rewrite this, the 1 is understood, so you don't need to bring that there. And this would be cadmium iodide. Obviously, these charges are going to uh, balance out. We'll do one more. And hopefully I can find the cation. Thank you, cameraman. <laughs> okay. How about cesium and sulfur? All right, cesium and sulfur. 
Um, cesium is going to be over here in the plus one column. And then sulfur is going to be over here in the minus two column. And you can label your periodic table like this. All right, so cesium is a plus one. Sulfur is a minus two. In order to get this to balance out, I'm going to need a two down here and just a one down there. Remember what I said about the ones? We can just leave them alone. And this is cesium sulfide. Cesium sulfide. So just the element with sulfur, the IDE after it. All right, and that is how you name just basic binary ionics.